Alright, so uh, this will begin uh, Career Build Series Part 18. So I, I already did a little bit of work on this uh, boat. I um, I made a mistake when I was recording and so I, I kind of cut it. So I also want to make this a little bit quicker than it was. So uh, uh, anyways, Le Lego King is cool had asked me to do a PID video. I'm not the best at um, at PID videos, but um, at PIDs, but um, I can certainly get them in a serviceable condition. So. I'm going to quickly show you what I did, and then uh, we'll kind of go through, and we can kind of get a visual representation with this boat of what's going on with the PIDs. All right, so let's look um, at the microcontroller I made. So I, I pretty much I made a microcontroller here. Um, it'll be on the build. Um, let's look at the stuff. So I pretty much imported this from um, other builds. So, um, you know, to kind of go through this, so I have a keypad, and that keypad is going to have me enter in a heading that I want. So let's say I want to go 180, I type in 180. That 180 is going to go to all the Y values. So I put a, a note here, it says Y equals heading hold keypad. So this is the X value, or, you know, that's um, the Y is going to go here. Um, and this, there's Y value, so heading hold goes there. Um, it's going to go through all of these different numbers. All right. And so what you see here of 180, negative 180, X minus 360, X plus 360, what this is doing is this is essentially telling you turn left or turn right. So let's say we're heading south, 180, right? And I put in a heading of 170, right? It's only 10 degrees to my left. So we want to force the boat to go left 10 degrees, not go 350 degrees to the right. So that's what this is doing here, okay? So uh, you'll be able to, you know, I, I just copied this from one of my other builds and, and pasted it right in here. Um, so you'll be able to do that as well. Um, so that's what the keypad component is. The next one is the compass sensor. Compass sensor, uh, I believe it outputs radians. And so if you put it in this formula here, um, it changes the radians to degrees. And so that allows us to get degrees, which is what we want. So that goes into the X value here. It also comes up here and it goes into our process variable. So what we're doing is we're telling um, the PID where we want to go and it's comparing it to the compass so it knows when to stop. All right, this section here, the keypad, so what I do is instead of having an autopilot button where I have to turn the autopilot button on, I make it so that if, if I put a number larger than zero in the keypad, it will automatically turn the autopilot on, or the heading hold in this case. All right. So then this is our PID, it's an advanced PID. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I have a keypad hooked to P so we can play with the P value. Um, where is it, P value, proportional value right there. We're not gonna worry about the I value. I value, I usually always put, you know, f you know, a ton of zeros and a one. I value you very rarely even need. And then the D value here, I'm gonna hook that up to another keypad. And that's going to allow me to change these on the fly so I can visually show you what's going on. Then this number comes up here and it adds to where my seat connects. So this is me controlling the rudder AD manually with my hand. All right. And that allows me to um, add it to the add it to this so that I can, you know, let's say I'm going to hit a rock, right? Let's say the heading hold has me going right to an island or a rock. I can quickly just hit the D key and steer around it. And I don't have to worry about looking over at the autopilot, shutting that off by putting a zero in and then, um, you know, hitting something. So that's that's why I have that. So I can manually override it without having to shut it off. All right, so let's go into this. Let's uh, update it. Um, this is pretty simple. It's just, um, you know, I have a compass sensor that's connected uh, to here. I have the keypad, which I put, um, you know, you'll miss where I put it, but I put it here. I'm actually going to move it. So... We can do that. I have a couple keypads in the ceiling. These are, that's for P, that's for D. Those are going to get deleted eventually, so that's no big deal. Um, the composite from the seat comes up and hooks here, and then this goes out to the rudders. All right. So let's go ahead and spawn it, and uh, let's let's uh, see how the heading hold works. All right. So we're going to jump in. We're going to start up. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll start driving. All right, now remember I said that um, I can manually steer this, so this is me manually steering here, okay? So I can manually steer, all right? And then I can, um, then what I can do here is I can use the heading hold. So it's right here, and you notice what I wrote, heading hold, enter zero to disable. So this starts with a zero, so it's shut off. So let's put in 180, and we'll see how quickly this boat turns. 
Not at all, apparently. What did I do? Okay. Did something because it's doing nothing now. <laughs> Alright, let me see what's up. Alright. Right off the bat, something's up. Okay. Like I said, I I had saved this, um, I had worked on this a little off and I had it going, so. Oh, I know why. That was stupid of me. Okay. Let me, uh, let me, let me get back on. Everything's connected properly. I just, um, I had already done this, most of this in another video, so I forgot something. But Okay, so I didn't put in a p-value, okay? So p is currently zero. All right, if you have a p-value of zero, it's not going to do anything. So watch, I can manually steer with AD. All right, I'm going to put in a p-value of one. So uh, Lego King is cool was asking, why are my p-values different? Well, the p-values are different for a number of reasons. So say, for example, these are pretty big rudders, right? Because these are big rudders, I don't need them to turn much to turn this boat. If this was a tiny little boat, I would need them to turn more. Plus, the p-value is essentially, um, you know, so if I had a huge p-value in there, which we're going to put in there, the rudder will go hard right, hard left, hard right, hard left, hard right, hard left, hard right, and it will keep doing this back and forth, back and forth. And you'll actually see that happen. If, so that's called overshooting. So your p-value is going too far, right? It's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right, so you don't want that. So what you would start to do is reduce your p-value. Your p-value would now go back and forth and back and forth. It's still overshooting, right? So you decrease the p-value. Again, it would go back and forth, back and forth. So still too much, decrease it a little bit, it will go back and forth. You'll decrease it again, it'll go like this. Barely perceptible. Now you're on the money. Now let's say that you want 180 and it only turns you to 170. Well, that p value is too low, you need to increase. So let's actually look at that. All right, so now let's put in a p value, it's 1. Let's look at our keypad, let's put 180. That's south. All right, the boat's going to make a big turn. All right, now watch what the stern of the boat's doing. See how it's jiggling back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? All right, I already know what the correct number for this is. It's 0 0.03, right? We have it set to 1. It's way too high. The p-value is too high. And if we look at the rudders, see how they're just flapping back and forth? All right, so our p-value is too high. We're overshooting, all right? We can make it worse. Let's go 10. That should be 10 times as bad. All right, so the rudders are still flapping max speed back and forth, back and forth. All right, so now let's go, right? So 1 was our first number. Let's do 0.5. All right, so we'll take that and we'll make it half. Now you notice, see how we're still flitting back and forth? Well, we're going a lot less. See how it's still going back and forth? Well, we're going a lot less, and we could actually tell this with our speed. Let's put one back in there. All right, look at our speed. Our speed's dropping down to about 10 knots because the rudders are going back and forth so fast, they're causing a lot of drag. It's slowing us down. If we put 0.5 in there, right we speed up because the rudders are turning less and you notice we're not wiggling as much let's put in half of that 0.25 notice we wiggle even less and now we're uh, going even faster right we're up to full speed now all right let's go to uh half of that 0.125 all right we're gonna have even less wiggle all right, so now I know off the top of my head the number is 0.03, and the reason is I just kept walking it down until I got it where I wanted it. All right. So, and if you look at our compass, it's showing south. That's perfectly south. Now let's um, now let's put in a D value. Okay, let's put a a high D value, 100. Okay, see how we're violently oscillating? All right. So d the D value, if you have too high of an oscillation like this, see how slow it's making us? Let's look at the rudders. See them going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth again? All right. So sometimes you need to do this with a plane or something. So 100 is too high. Let's put in 1. All right. You've robbed all our speed. We're coming back up. So that's 1 one hundredth of it. Notice they're barely going back and forth now. All right. So we know that that D value works. Now I'm just going to set it to where it originally was, 0.05. Oh, I'm sorry, 0.5. All right, and I know that value works, so that's why I'm using it. Okay, and again, that's just testing. You want to just keep testing this, right? You, you could probably keep that at 1 and it'd be fine. All right, now the I value, you don't have to always put in an I value. I usually put an I value 0 0.0001. 
Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not good at explaining the I value. You can go on Google and, and see what the I value is. The I value, in my understanding, is essentially that over time you're going to pick up some error and it's, that's going to correct for it. You want that to be incredibly low. All right, so let's turn to 270. We have one more problem to fix on this. So 270 is west. And it's, see how fast and crazy we turn? All right, that's that's a very simple problem. That's We need to limit our rudder, right? So think of it this way. You're driving a car, right? And you're going full speed, and, a, and you want to turn right, so you go full right steering wheel, right? That's what we're doing there. We don't, so what we want to do is we want to limit um, our rudder angle. Um, we're going to limit our rudder angle because we're going too fast. Now, let's go slow for a second. All right, so let's go one bar of speed. All right, so we might go maybe six knots, five, six knots. A little less than that, three. We're even moving. We're not moving, so let's add some. I want to just barely be moving. I want to go slow speed. Okay, so here we go. We're going about eight knots, something like that. Nine knots. Okay, so we're going nine knots. Now let's enter in uh, 180. All right, so see... It's less violent. We're able to make big turns. So what we essentially want to do is we want to limit the angle of our rudder based on our speed. All right, so that's the last part of this equation. All right, so let's go in here. So what we need to do is we need to limit the rudder for speed. And so I want to do this manually, too. I don't want to be able to do a huge turn. So what we'll do is we'll put it in here by the rudder. So now I'm going to try to come up with a function off the top of my head. So um, that's going to mean I need speed, which is fine. Um, let me start deleting some of these these values out. P and D, we'll get rid of those. I'll add um, number input, linear speed, linear speed. Okay, linear speed is in there. All right, so uh, we have our linear speed. So what I want to do is I want to come up with some formula. Um, I'm going to connect these back up. I just know these work, so I'm going to reconnect them. All right, so um, the linear speed here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a formula that will limit this. Um, I'm trying to think how to do it. Um, we could do that, or we could do it with numerical switch box. I'm trying to think of what's going to be easiest here. Um, let me try some. Let me try some. I'm just going to grab the calculator here off screen and kind of do some quick calcs to try to figure out a good formula for this. Let's see. So the max angle on that is probably 0.5. Um, so 0.5 would be, so let's see, I think it's 1. So let's see. Okay, might be able to do a simple division. Okay, so I think we can do this with simple division. So let's say we, uh, so let's say the max rudder angle is one. So one would be all the way to the right, negative one would be all the way to the left or vice versa. If we're going one mile an hour, one divided by one is one. So that allows us to use the maximum amount of the rudder. All right, if we're going, uh, let's say we're going 10 knots. So that would be um, that would be one divided by ten. That's going to be a maximum rudder angle of 0.1. All right. It, let's say we're going um, 30. All right, 30 knots. That's going to give us a maximum rudder angle of 0 0.03. All right. So let's try this really quick. So uh, it would be x. Actually, we need a different function block. Uh, let's go to function. Okay, here we have one that's x, y. Yep, so we should be able to do this one here. All right, so um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this our x. This will be our y. All right, so what we'll do is we'll do um, we'll do x um, x divided by y. All right, now I think those numbers are going to be too small because if we're going um, 30 knots, it's going to give us 0 0.03 rudder. 
that's really not a lot of rudder. Um, I would say 0.3 makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll put that in parentheses and we'll multiply that by 10. We'll move the decimal place uh, one tenth. We could also, you know, just divide that. But um, uh, let me look at, actually, I want to check out, um, because this is going to come in meters per second. So let me quickly do a calculation for meters per second. So 30 knots divided by 1.9. Four three eight four four, that's fifteen uh, meters per second. So we'd say um, so it's going to be one divided by fifteen. So that's 0 0.06. So that's still uh, probably too low. So this this formula should work. So what this should do is, let's say I put in a maximum rudder angle of one, right? It's going to then say, okay, you're going thirty. You can have 0 0.03. It's then going to multiply it by ten it's going to say you can have 0.3 rudder at max speed. All right. If I'm going one knot, or if I'm going uh, one, one divided by one is one, it lets me have the full rudder. So let's try this. Let's see if this uh, solves that crazy problem. Um, let's try it. This is the first time I've actually done this, so we'll see if this works. Uh, pretty simple formula. So we need to plug in our linear speed here. Uh, I don't know why I don't have it. Oh, it was... I hooked it up to right here. Okay, so we're done with the PID. Um, I'll, I'll uh, send uh, Lego King is cool uh, message it if you'd like. I can uh, I can do some more PID work. There's altimeter. There's linear speed. Okay, so let's try this. Let's see if this um, solves my issue. Also found another issue. Um, I want to make my um, I want to make my um, throttles less sensitive so that I can go slower speeds. Okay. All right, so here we are at max speed. We're over 30 knots. Okay, so now I'm manually going to control it. I want to go hard right rudder, and I want to make sure that the boat doesn't do a sharp turn. Beautiful. See how it's a nice slow turn now? Because it's automatically limiting my rudder. Okay, good. So now let me... I uh, actually might want to limit that even more. All right, so now let's go, um, let's actually go, let's see. Okay, let's go down, start reducing our throttle. Let's go about half throttle. All right, so I'm going about half the speed that I was, so I should be able to get double the rudder. There we go. So it looks like, yep, double the rudder. Okay, so I actually think the number's 0.5. So let me, let me read, uh, let me check this really quick. So my formula needs a little bit of work here. Um, I think I can multiply that by five. Okay, so that's so I, we're getting a little bit more rudder than I'd like. Let me do this. Um, so we're we're multiplying by ten. Let's multiply it by five. Well, let's check that. And hopefully this should limit that rudder so that it's not um, we're not making that crazy sharp turn like we we're making. Okay, and then we'll do the. Uh, We'll do the uh, heading hold, and then we'll finish it up. And so we can play with that formula. We can play with that formula to see if, uh, if, if it's too much. So let me do a... So we're going full speed. Let's do a hard right turn. Nice. See how it's nice and smooth now at a high speed? Okay, so that's, that's pretty good. I like that. That's, that's not too crazy. It's giving me nice smooth speed. Let's look at the rudder visually. It's going to be hard to see, but um, so let's make a hard right turn. And you notice, see how we get about maybe 10% rudder maximum? So the formula is doing that for us. Okay, so this is working well. I'm going to add this to a bunch of my builds. All right, so let's go down to about half thrust. All right, so we should be getting double the uh, rudder um, now because we're going half thrust. All right, so now let's go down and look at the... Uh, Jump. Did I jump out of the seat? I did not. Okay. Let's. So I'm going to hold hard left rudder, and if we look, uh, we almost have maximum rudder there. All right. So beautiful. See, we can do nice tight turns now. All right. Let's go down even lower. Let's try to get down to. Uh, let's try to get down to a, a couple knots here. We should have maximum rudder. All right, so that's pretty good. With six, so we should be able to get about maximum rudder. And if you look, you can see we have max rudder. 
So this allows us to have max rudder at slow speeds, and at high speeds it reduces the amount of rudder we're going to have so that the boat doesn't act crazy. So now let's uh, go full speed again. All right, so remember how the boat was snapping really hard to the turn, so let's enter this in, 180. Nice smooth turn to 180. Okay, let's go 270. And we shouldn't be losing much speed in these turns, so let's watch. Nice, so we lose a couple knots, not the end of the world, but pretty smooth turns now. All right, so that's good. So, uh, so I like this system, this system works well. So now we have a heading hold in here, and so this is gonna be really good for towing. Remember how, uh, you know, we were struggling because, you know, we have uh, constantly left, right, left, right. This is gonna take care of our towing needs so that we can just, man, you know, put in a heading and it's good. Now, remember I said the reason I, I make it so that I can also steer with my controls is let's say I'm gonna hit a rock, I can go hard left, I can override the heading hold, and I can avoid the rock, and now watch, when I let go, it's gonna automatically steer me back to the heading. So this would be good, say you're going under the bridge pylons, right? and you're heading right for a bridge pylon, you can steer around the pylon manually, and then you'll be able to, as soon as you let go, it'll automatically go back to the heading you wanted it to go to. All right, so I could turn us, again, avoid an obstacle, I'm turning hard right, and then I let go, and it's gonna turn me back to my heading of 270, and it should straighten up west. All right, so I hope that worked for Lego King is cool for uh, some PID knowledge. Um, you know, there are a lot of PID tutorials online. I'm not necessarily the best at it. I kind of play with it until I get it there. Um, but I hope that gave you a visual representation. And if you have anything specific, you know, if anybody has anything specific they would like answered, I can, you know, especially if you have a build that's misbehaving, you know, I could do a, a fix-it build where I, where I work on it and see if I can fix it for you. Um, but so this, so as far as the career build, we added this um, somewhere. I'm going to move it, but we added this uh, this heading uh, hold here, um, which is going to allow us to uh, set our heading and forget it. So uh, thank you for watching. Bye.